Hey guys, I don't think you're going to be able to see everything I see, but uh, we are underneath the house, which is, uh, I don't know, let's say 20 inches, the frame is 20 inches off the ground. We've set up our water level, which is right here. Well, I'll have to show you how I make a water level. Um, it's more rugged than the ones that, that I started out with, which were for ceiling grids. Very accurate. We used to check our uh, lasers with them, set benchmarks, and then measure up from the benchmarks to do acoustical ceilings. Of course, this one is made out of uh, Schedule 40 PVC fittings, and I'll... I'll uh, do a video on how you do that and then there's a uh, colored water inside of a clear line that and it's uh, 50 60 foot long that way I can basically go a hundred foot radius uh, from the reservoir which I generally put near the center um, this particular house is uh, rougher than some because uh, all of the underpinning is pulled down as you can tell it's kind of a uh, paper covered um, and, and the moisture eventually pulled it down. Animals pulled it down also. Um, if you see right here, uh, where it would have been straps on the middle, they're not there anymore. They, this is probably second or third move for this house. And it's been sitting here for quite a while. I worked on it something like 15 or 20 years ago and told them they needed to put uh, insulation in the house, in the in the floor and then cover it up and generally what I would do is um, put um, insulation in between the floor joists there's a place where I get it uh, instead of getting the stuff at Lowe's which is more expensive I get it at a drywall supply place where they put it in uh, sealant tile so a, a two foot would be exactly two foot so it would sit on top of the ceiling and you could insulate the ceiling that way whereas the stuff you buy at Lowe's is uh, 14 and a half, 15 and a half, something like that cut down to fit in between uh, the, the floor joists well uh, a lot of times the floor joists are not dead on or it's just difficult to get, to get to stay so you end up buying these uh, wires to hold in between the rafters to hold that up if you go with the ceiling tile uh, type insulation, you shove it in there and it just it wedges in and it's it's bigger than the opening, uh, and it's the same and it's actually cheaper because you're buying it as a, from a place that generally sells wholesale. But um, moisture on the ground because the vapor barrier is not there ends up causing things like you see right there where the moisture is getting to the floorboards and uh, where the, you can also see where they've replaced the floor. So, um, we are moving, what I've done is set this water level to that frame and then went around and checked. Actually, I am not gonna take credit for it. My skinny number one is, uh, not that I can't do it and haven't done it many, many times. I've been doing this for 30 plus years, if you count multiple states. But in 26 years in this area, uh, I've crawled all through these places. Um, so he's crawled through, and we give him credit for that. The um, thing we do first is we go and take that other end of that water level, which, again, I'll show you how that operates and uh, how to adjust it. And um, very simple. And he checked it. We, you know, with this area, and we determined that one whole side on the side we came in on is an inch and basically an inch and a half to an inch uh, too low. And then the frame, this frame here, which we are level to, is pretty good all the way through. And then the one that's on the second half, which is this is a double wide, it's pretty good. Except for just a little ways down that way, it's about a half inch off, and we'll probably take that up. And then the the final frame way over here is toward the ravine side, which is a pretty big old ravine behind us. 
is about an inch and a half and then slowly, it, well, fairly quickly actually, it goes up and uh, and it starts leveling out about halfway through. So we're going to take that side over there up first, and that's what he's setting up for. Um, this is not me instructing you on how to do this. It would be a much lengthier video um, because there's a lot of things that you need to know before you... and, and you don't want to make a mistake because that would, what happens is, uh, and I've not done it, so I'm not speaking from experience. I'm speaking speaking from other people's experience, and me coming along and fixing it. But if you don't stay level, it will push. I don't care if you have three jacks; it will push everything, uh, all your jacks out level. So every jack has to be level. In this case, we're using one. And uh, he's, we're going to go up over there first, and then we're going to come over to the middle. And we'll go up that half inch, and that way we will have uh, more than half of the house level. Then we'll move to the other side, and we'll go up an inch and a half over there. Now I'm not... So he's over there <coughs> going up. Generally, he uh, tells everybody, hey, we're going up. That way everybody knows to keep an eye on their peers and uh, keep leveling and putting wood in so you don't lose what you might have if say the something crunches and settles down fast um, we're using a 20 ton hydraulic jack no bottle tiny bottle jack the one i have is a uh, it's well over 20 years old it's welded bottom not threaded in i know that that sounds like a picky thing but if you get one under a lot of stress uh not up and down but say if you're not you're having to jack a house sideways and i know that's not something the general public's going to do it won't break the bottom uh this one is showing its old age because it's leaking oil uh and we'll eventually have to get another one instead of paying as much as a new one for a rebuild. So anyway, um, this is what we have to deal with. We've already crawled over a dead carcass or two, either brought in or just crawled in here to die. And uh, it can be unnerving the size of the spiders, especially with Tim, like he's doesn't like spiders. And he says that's an understatement. So uh, keep in mind, this is not me telling you to go and tackle something like this. I want to show you guys a little bit uh, as I go along. And then maybe uh, there will be a compilation if you pay attention to all this stuff. But it, there's years and years in, of experience. And, and one year alone, we did uh, 44 double wides. We did four uh, triple wides and then another no it was 150 double wides 44 single wides and then three or four triple wides all in one in like a year and two months so I had a crash course uh, that sped up my skill level I can pass on to you all these different tips but I really would rather you turn it over to somebody that uh has the experience and the tools but anyway i will show you what i know as i go along and uh, of course you can't pick up everything i know in a camera i can show you as much as i can so we're gonna turn you loose from this video and we're gonna disappear for a little bit here we are on another end of the same house um it's been quite a few repairs in here and not really my style. Um, for instance, the where the joints are that are not got any wood underneath them. Uh, multiple boards to support. Ooh. Over here where... Uh, the board is not really connected right there. Uh, it's, I would have made sure there was something there to support that. Uh, not so much for 
the pipe but for the that little bit of area right there above is not strong enough to support much weight and uh, it's a good idea to have wood on, that covers this joint so that there's no movement right here between these two say if you step on this side it squishes down that side and it ends up making a crease in the flooring up above so generally i would always put uh, two by over here and tie the two of them together so they move together but uh they did use plywood for the most part and uh uh there's a uh, this frame right here which you can see a little bit more whenever you're jacking on it you want to set in the center right up underneath this frame here so your jack would be right in the center the head of that jack would be right in the center so it would jack up there and you want to make sure that down here where you're digging you're level you're not tilted so then it push that frame and literally bend the lip if you try to set up out here it'll bend the lip up and pop the jack out a lot of bad things happen um, so as you can tell uh, let's see right here you see that bend most likely that's caused by somebody jacking other than in the center over here on this edge um, Sometimes you have to be conscious of the fact that they may have bent the frame or even welded the frame. So you've got to be smart about the frame, look for wrinkles. They'll end up being uh, wrinkles right here. You don't want to set up in the same place, encourage it to bend in the same place. So now we're, uh, this area here, we've determined it's got to go up an inch and a half, but we'll still check it as we go. Um, the water level is kind of a, a little more of a nuisance to deal with because of the lack of lack of underpinning to hold it usually what we do is tuck it right above the well right above the frame and the friction of the the underpinning holds it to the frame and then it drapes down here and you can see the bot where the water is and where we got to go up or down and uh, so what he's doing is is uh, taking a look and kind of holding it which is more of a nuisance uh, and we'll set up the jack to go oh. <laughs> up see if you I don't know if you'll we'll see if it's even closer if you notice the water is showing that the, that's where the bottom or the top of that ledge of that frame should be and we got to take it up that much so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna jack that up and then we'll add to the block up here there both here and here huh? and that's what we're doing next